Welcome to Money Veterans, I'm Monica, and this is your weekly strategic update where we cut through the noise and focus on what really moves the markets. Less noise, more strategy. Chapter 1, Markets in Motion. The beginning of the week, 10th of November, was positive, with reassuring news about the US government shutdown over the weekend. The US Senate advanced a temporary funding bill to reopen the federal government, signaling a potential return to normalcy. This contributed to a global risk on move. US, European and Asian equity indices posted gains. However, a market correction began on Wednesday and intensified on Thursday, with the tech sector particularly affected. As mentioned in our previous episode, markets continue to reassess valuations across AI-related and large-cap technology names. Regarding the crypto market, Bitcoin initially benefited from the improved sentiment but later moved below $100,000, a level closely monitored by many market participants. A quick milestone, the Bitcoin white paper was published 17 years ago, an important date for the crypto ecosystem. Hello, I am Edward, and together we will look at what professionals typically monitor from a theoretical portfolio perspective. Fundamentals first. This rebound appears mostly technical, driven by relief sentiment. A more durable trend will depend on macro indicators such as consumption, employment, and inflation. Portfolio angle. A theoretical view. In portfolio theory, Environments like this sometimes lead to discussions about marginal adjustments to equity exposure. In practice, decisions always depend on each investor's mandate, constraints, risk profile, and horizon. There is no universal approach. Risk Management Stabilizers Many institutional frameworks maintain allocations to bonds or precious metals as potential stabilizers when uncertainty remains elevated. Strategic Layer in the Money Veterans Framework the shutdown resolution may act as a short-term catalyst. Some analysts are observing rotations from mega-growth names toward more cyclical or quality value segments. Purely as dynamics to monitor, AI remains a long-term theme, with increasing attention on profitability and earnings contribution. Everything in this section is for general educational illustration only, not a recommendation to modify any personal portfolio. Remaining Risks shut down aftershocks. Even with an agreement progressing, some impacts remain visible. Delays in data releases and short-term disruptions in federal dependent sectors. Valuation pressure on tech and AI names. The recent pause in the AI rally reminded investors that valuations had become elevated. The key point many professionals monitor is whether earnings trajectories will justify these valuations. Rates may stay higher for longer. Expectations for quick rate cuts could moderate. Any signal from the Federal Reserve suggesting limited near-term easing could influence market sentiment. This is for educational purposes only, not investment advice. Chapter 3. Ideas and Themes. Multi-Factor Analysis. Today we revisit one of the most widely used frameworks in modern investing, multi-factor analysis. What are the quantitative factors that help explain price behavior? Many investors describe themselves as stock pickers or allocators, but a significant part of performance is often linked to factors behind the returns. The six key factors are momentum, value, quality, high dividend, low volatility, and size. Some of you asked for a study of HDFC Bank following the earlier episode discussing Michael Porter's framework. Today, we use HDFC Bank as an educational example to illustrate how a factor-based perspective works. Important disclaimer, we do not have any relationship with HDFC Bank or its management. We do not receive any compensation and have no financial interest in mentioning this company. This analysis is purely illustrative and should not be interpreted as a buy, hold or sell signal for any security. Factor 1. Momentum HDFC Bank has gained roughly 14% this year, relative to a generally strong environment for Indian financials. Momentum remains positive, with the stock trading above several widely watched moving averages. 
Some foreign investors have shown renewed interest following the merger with HDFC Limited. Factor 2. Value and Quality At a forward PE around 21, the stock trades at a valuation that reflects its quality profile. Return on equity above 17%, gross NPA near 1.2%, cost to income ratio below 38%. This is not a judgment of whether the stock is cheap or expensive, only an illustration of how factor investors think about value and quality attributes. Factor 3. Volatility, Size and Dividend With a beta below 1, the stock tends to move somewhat less than the broader market. HDFC Bank is India's largest private sector lender with a market capitalization above 160 billion US dollars. Its dividend yield is modest, near 1%, with retained earnings supporting long-term expansion. Factors combined. Money Veterans Matrix. Conclusion, in this purely illustrative model, HDFC Bank scores around 4.25 out of 5, resembling a quality plus momentum factor profile. Factor Verdict HDFC Bank is widely followed by domestic and international investors as a large Indian financial institution with a long track record. This example helps show how factor frameworks are applied, again, for educational purposes only. I'm Maya. And this is Money Veterans. Less noise, more strategy. Final takeaway. One. The shutdown's effects aren't fully behind us. Two. Valuation pressure remains visible in tech and AI segments. Three. That market dynamics continue to rotate, something many professionals monitor carefully. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And tell us which stock you'd like us to illustrate next with a multi-factor analysis. See you soon.